Yo, 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 YouTube. It's 4.31. It's 4.31. Where are you guys at, man? Why is there not a thousand people up in here already? What's going on? The hell? Oh, man, I am feeling a little uh, tired, I guess. So we got one here today, Rockstar Recovery. I don't think these have a lot of caffeine. They have some, but I don't think it's like super powerful. I think it's like 150 or some, some, yeah, 160. Anyway, a little pep, a little pep in my step. Yo, GB19 from the window to the wall to the sweat drop down. My... Um, is it seriously Wednesday? I think so, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's Wednesday. <laughs> you made me doubt it just now. Yeah, I was like, wait, I think it's Wednesday. I hope it's Wednesday. I'm here. What's up, Alan Fishman? What's up, Lloyd Chris Mass? What up, GB19? What's going on, guys? How is everybody doing? You guys on your way in, please click the thumbs up, the like button uh, on the video. It helps it out. I would appreciate the love. Oh, let me change it to all messages. There we go. Um, what's up, brother? I was thinking you started earlier. No, 4.30 Wednesdays, man. 4.30 on Wednesdays. I'm starting to fill up the shirt a little more. So it's weird. My my weight my weight is being weird right now. I'm lifting. I'm eating. I'm doing the things. Um, I'm gaining some weight, but it's it's slow. But I can see um, I'm losing a lot of body fat and replacing it with a lot of muscle right now. So I think that I'm doing that weird exchange thing right now. I'm starting to get jacked. No, I don't know. But I, I can see like visually that I'm getting a little more – I'm gaining more muscle mass, I guess. So that's good. It's just when you stare at the scale, and I generally want to get heavier. and get, I mean, I want to gain muscle. And so you want to see that scale going up and up and up. And uh, when it's not, it's frustrating. But I have faith. If I continue to eat and lift, I will get gigantic. Um, let's see. Uh, Reflex says, yo, not arm wrestling related. Well, you hear about the Nick Merckx and Cock thing last week? No, I have not. I have not heard anything about that. White Wolf, what's going on? Buddy, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're still rocking the gear you got from us. Uh, let's see. John Thumb says, hey, isn't the same shirt? Um, did pass me in subs. Oh, well, hey, <laughs> this is not the same shirt. I was giving Jake crap. Uh, he's talking about Aussie Arm Wrestler. I was giving Jake crap about wearing the same shirt in uh, Australia as he was when he got in Dubai. So the same shirt as yesterday. <laughs> um, Alex McDonald, wait, is this the Derek Smith? Like the one who could beat LeVon while he's using two hands? Yeah. Yep. Yep, that's me. <laughs> uh, let's see. From the gym to Jake to you, great timing. Good. I'm glad you're able to hang out with us, man. Devin Dodd, what's going on? Me and Devin Dodd went and saw The Flash yesterday, last night. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Obviously, I'm not going to give any spoilers out. It wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. I'll put it that way. Um, I, I, I had higher hopes for it. I, I wouldn't say it was bad. I mean, you get a lot of Flash stuff, but I had high hopes. I had high hopes. Because I, I went to a different gym last night because my gym, scheduling conflicts. I couldn't go to my gym, so I went to one that was open late. I went at like 9 o'clock at night to one in a different city, but it's right next to the movie theater. So I hit a Devin Dodd there and said, let's go see Flash. And we did. And I don't think he was very impressed either. Um, but, you know, it's a thing. Uh, King Hoddle, what's going on? GB19, Devin and Alexi, one of those lost matches. I know. I wonder if they're going to grip up or mess around on the table. I'm sure I'm sure they're talking or Devin's trying to set something up 100%. Uh, Ephraim, what's up? Dave, you outclassed the bum. Uh, who do you think needs to win the match more, Dave or Devin? Needs to win the match. Ooh, that is a good question. I mean, Dave's been on a bit of a losing streak. Devin lost his last one. Devin's a bit bigger of a name than Dave. I guess, okay, who who would it damage more to lose? I think it would do more damage to Devin's brand than for Dave to lose. So I guess I'd say Devin needs to win more than Dave. I, guess, I mean, they both need to win, but I guess if I'm thinking, yeah, who's – Who's gonna who would damage more if they lose? I guess it would damage Devin more if he lost. Um, 
Reflex says Nick Merckx tweeted, they need to leave children alone on a video posted on Twitter, and he got his COD bundle removed from the game from that tweet. Damn, that sucks. Devin Dodd says he went to the gym that the legendary Zilla usually goes to. <laughs> uh, White Wolf says, haven't taken my Alpha Empire gear off since April, making makes dating a bit more difficult, but those are the, pri the prices we must pay. <laughs> I agree. Sarah Latona, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Casey Jones, Derek, what are you drinking? I am drinking an orange rock star recovery. It's, I only, Bridget the other day brought over a couple energy drinks, this, and then this other one, uh, new rock star flavor, but I already tried it. I tried it like a couple weeks ago and it was gross. But luckily she brought this one. And, uh, so Bridget saves the day once again. Um, let's see. Alex Donald says, uh, I didn't think the trailer looked very good. Grant Gustin should have played the flash. I don't know who Grant Gustin. Uh, arm wrestling opinion what's going on looking forward to see you back at east west west me too man i am stoked to be back there competing paul Lynn is doing a great job man i'm um, to be honest like i he's putting in um effort to keep me motivated as well as well as helping answer all my questions and overseeing you know some of the training i'm doing uh, he's also sending me like motivational messages just like one-on-one -on -one, like hey bro you know you're gonna kill it this time just keep the training up you're an absolute beast you know things like that He's sending it, sending it to me. So Paul's staying on me, and um, it's good. It's good to have that motivation, and, and, and Paul is a beast, a soldier, an animal, and uh, really excited to be working with him. So just credit to Paul for trying to make sure I'm staying uh, on the straight and narrow and, and being motivated. Uh, super chat, first super chat of the day from Tip. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the love. First super chat of the day and the super chats. Wait, let's rate this first. Tip. I like that. It's tip. Oh, no. There we go. Tip with the uh, $9.99. The only reason I write $9.99 is because then someone's going to come back with exactly $10 and then get mad if I don't put it on the board. Tip, $9.99. Thank you, sir. And Tip says, support the big man. Y'all mofos, super chat. $10 plus beats me. <laughs> put me next to Chave. Yes, sir. You can hang out next to Chave anytime you want, man. Chave's always looking for somebody to hang out with. Uh. Apparently, uh, Aussie Arm Wrestler told Dave Chafee about Chave, and Dave was down. I mean, he better be. Chave's the most bad, at, most famous arm wrestling plant on the planet, for sure. Um, guy who played him in the TV series. Oh, okay, okay. I, I actually watched a lot of the TV series. Um, White Wolf, member for 21 months, says, <laughs> Thank you, sir, man. You've been a big supporter for a long time, White Wolf. Thank you. Thank you for always being there, man. Um, Let's see. Um, Reflex says, by the way, Texas Prana is feeling strong. Pulled him last weekend. Of course he's feeling strong, man. Mike is a beast if he could just try to stay injury-free and not overtrain himself. Efren says, uh, did you see elite powerlifter James Strickland swim hack came to our practice in Houston last weekend? He's going to be ready for that rematch with Leroy in a bit. Oh, I did not see that. Uh, I mean, we are making huge gains with Leroy. I mean, because a lot of it is just – it's not even like physical gains, right? It's just unlocking certain stuff, explaining things in a, in a way that's very digestible and, and applicable on the table and just taking our time with things, right? And so just building steps and foundations. So when you do that, uh, if, it's, if it's really resonating, then you make big steps, right? Just in technique, just in putting pressure here instead of here at the beginning or here instead of here, uh, that, that's really big. And it helps out a lot of people that, that uh, haven't quite got that, that all dialed in yet. So um, Leroy's going to be making big gains. You know, obviously it'll slow down at some point and then it'll be about strengthening up certain arm wrestling strengths, which we're still working on, but I'm really excited to be working with him. I think, yeah, obviously he has a ton of potential. Um, so I'm going to be getting ready for all the, his upcoming matches. That's for sure. Um, Sarah says, uh, are you coming to our big practice on Sunday, Dick? We may even have some of the Aust uh, Austria team coming from overseas while they're visiting Austria or Australia, Austria. Um, I'll be, I have to, I'm hosting my regular practice. But I'm not able to travel right now like that. Um, although that would be fun. Uh, but we have some visitors coming to my practice on Sunday as well. So I won't be able to make it out there. Uh, Thomas Miles, but thank you for the invite. Thomas Miles says, uh, I hope you've continued success in commentating as well as arm wrestling. You have real talent. Thank you, Thomas. Appreciate that. With the compliment. Um, yeah, man, the, the, the commentating thing is, is a side gig. It's fun. Uh, I like to do it. And if they need, you know, places need someone to fill in and, and uh, fill up the airtime a little bit. I can do that. I can I can talk for hours. You guys know this. I can just go. I can just keep going. I can just keep going. Um, Xavier, member for 21 months as well. 
flexing, always supporting me as well. Again, it's it's I love all you guys, all everybody that supports me and hangs out and even watches this and chills. Uh, but also a huge shout out to all the the day ones, the people that have been here, you know, for a super long time, always supporting the channel. Uh, you guys are awesome. I know you, who you are. You know I know who you are. You guys are my people. Uh, thank you for always supporting the channel, guys. Um, Alex McDonald says, because I'm sure you've never been asked this, but when's your next match? Uh, August 26th at East First West in Istanbul. I am facing Mehdi Abdulvan, the number one guy from Iran. He's this big, scary dude. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be having a match. Ooh, another super chat from Lloyd Christmas. Thank you, sir. Taking the top spot next to Chave. Mr. Lloyd Christmas. Just putting Z. <laughs> Thank you, sir. With the twenty dollars super chat, it says crack Chave Davey in the mouth. You want me to hit my plant, son? Crack Chave Davey in the mouth. What? You want me to hit him? You know what? I, I'll do a lot of things for super chats and for money and things like that, but I can't hit my baby boy. I think you you understand this, Xavier. I would never ask you to hit your child. Please don't ask me to hit mine. You know what I mean? It's, it's you know, it's a thing. I'll let you chill next to Chave, though, on the board, but I can't just be hitting him. Like, he didn't do anything wrong. He's actually a fantastic kid. So I can't, but thank you for the $20 super chat. I appreciate that. You guys, when we're at 35 people, 18 likes, we get a thumbs up button on your way in. I'd appreciate the love. Uh, let's see. Wing Zero says, hello, what up? Um, Alex McDonald because I'm sure, wait, oh, never mind. I read that one. Uh, 1.4 gigahertz max says, brief thoughts on Wem, Wembanyama? I don't know what that is. Tom Paul Hutchins uh, Jr., how do y'all, Mr. Da, 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 Dare? What's going on, Tom Paul? How you doing, man? Uh, June 19, what, who's your oldest channel member? Oh, I have to go look. I'm not sure. I go look on the uh, on YouTube studio. I don't know. I don't think I can do it right now. Um I'm not sure. I'll have to check that out. I don't know who the first uh, member was. Who was it? Who was the first member? Damn, I got to go look. I should know that. That's something I should know. I failed. I failed. Um, let's see. Facts, White Wolf. Uh, age or length of membership, says White Wolf. Uh, DK Cabo says, any super matches for Mega Mike coming up? Super matches? No. Um, people are, you guys, if anybody is in the 242s or the Supers really and wants to come out here and get a piece of Mega Mike, this man does not know how to say no. Uh, he's down to take all, all oncomers. So, uh, but nothing planned that I know of right now. Unless, I mean, Mike's his own man. He gets hit up on the low. He has things in, in the works that I might not know about, uh, but that I'm aware of. No, not right now. Um, I know he's gunning for a higher spot, a right hand in the 242 weight class. He's you know going to try to work his way up to Pablo and, Marcio and Matt Mask and all that stuff. That, that's the goal. Uh, Tony says, people need to actually teach Leroy instead of just having matches with him. Yes. And that's why, and I tell him that. It, this sucks because, you know, he has a name and everybody wants to try to kill him on camera. And so this last practice we had was a smaller one. Uh, it was during Father's Day. So, you know, 15, 20 people there tops. And uh, we were able to just, me and Leroy got on the table for like an hour of just pure instructional stuff. Then I have someone, some of the, you know, the lighter, newer, weaker guys go over and pull the Roy. We could practice things. And uh, it was really productive, really productive. That's what needs to happen. Um, Austria. Okay. Austria. Oh, snap. Reflex says, uh, need Brian Shaw locked on arm wrestling before he gets too old. I know. I'm hoping he gets fully into it, guys. I'm really hoping. I think there's positive signs that that will happen, but uh, nothing, nothing dead set in, uh, in stone yet. Um, White Wolf says, we became members at the same time, but you one up me, uh, Lloyd Christmas, uh, got the wrench when it was thrown. Wing Zero says, if he's from Iran, could he be another Iranian Hulk? Um, I don't know his if he has any nicknames, what his nicknames are, but he's dude, he looks like Levon. Like he's built like Levon, like 6'3, 400 pounds, you know, thick, thick dude, but older. He's older. Uh Zula, what's going on? Please don't hit him. See, exactly. I can't hit him. Uh Tom Paul Hutchins says, You think Devin's gonna walk out in a prison inmate suit? That would be funny. That would be hilarious. King Hano says, Do you know when the Iranian had his last match? Uh, or Iran, Iranian. I try to say it correctly. Um, I th dude, it's been, I think it's been like five or six years in the last big super match, I think. So it's been a little while. It's been a little while. His physique has definitely changed from back when he was taking the matches till now, 100%. Uh, 
Big super chat for White Wolf, 1999. Thank you, sir, for all the love. I appreciate you. Says, oh, well, since Lloyd and I came at the same time, I guess I'll have to match his super chat almost. Lloyd's been here since the beginning. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how else to do that, Aru. Like, I mean, I do it really lightly. I mean, I don't know if I can <clears throat> make it more masculine. Like, Aru. That sounds, you know, what if my neighbors hear me? Aru. I, yeah, I don't. I don't know. What do you guys think? More bass in the voice when I do the aru, or is it just keep it light, a light, a light aru? <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, we are old brothers. White Wolf uh, says Lloyd Christmas. That's a hard match, Derek. Yeah. Where's Chance Shaw? Am I with Colin? I just talked to Chance um, on the phone last week for like an hour. Uh, Chance has it. He has a couple matches coming up. He has a match with um, Petrenko, Oleg Petrenko at East vs. West eight. I think that's the next one coming up. And then he has a match coming up with, that was already announced, so I can say it out loud. Oh, with um, Sabin Badalescu. Uh, chances for Sabin Badalescu in August. I believe it's August 26th out in New Jersey. Uh, so that's going to be, chances of big matches coming up. And his lazy ass better start training hard. It's, dude, it's, if you guys knew chance behind the scenes, and you guys knew, how much chance is not trained and how lazy this kid is. <laughs> and, and, like, he still accomplishes all those amazing things, right? He's super, super strong and still trains so minimally, so minimally, <laughs> if, like, if not at all. Oh, yeah, when I wrestled or done anything like two months, I'm just kind of kicking it. And he'll still go do amazing. So uh, help me get on Chance's ass about that, guys. Like, uh, just keep messaging him saying, hey, go hit, hit the weights. Go to practice, man. Just keep stay on Chance with me, guys. Um White Wolf, Vince, once again, thank you for the super chat, man. Thank you for the support. Dennis Sapletkov, hello. I love this wolf. Oh, okay. I think we all do. Uh, no, dude. Play a mournful how how on YouTube. You'll get it. Carolyn, there she is. Says, whoa, yes, it's Wednesday. Good to see everyone. Hashtag, we are the West. Carolyn, a big supporter of Team West, a big supporter uh, of mine and a lot of uh, YouTubers. Carolyn, you are amazing. Thank you so much for all the positive words all the time. Um, so... We got 45 people in here, 22 likes. If we can get a little thumbs up button, I would appreciate that. But let's get into the topic. Uh, moderators, please feel free to plug any YouTube channels that pop into the chat. Anybody that has a YouTube channel, let the moderators know, and they will plug a link to your channel. I promote all arm wrestling channels that come in here for sure. This is, not, this is about all of us going, moving forward, and if I can help, let me know. Um, also, if you guys get a chance, check out the awswitch.com. Get yourself a shirt. Oh, Texas arm wrestling shirt, hats, stickers. Uh stickers you got like the chave sticker we got like my some of my team stickers oh there's a Derek smith sticker on there too with me trying to look all flexy and strong um so the topic i kind of wanted to cover is just a real basic layout of how to get in the sport there's a lot of people that watch uh youtube and kind of look from the outside in and don't know how to really get started uh when i got started in the sport it was so difficult it was the hardest thing in the world i wanted to become an arm wrestler for like a year and a half before i figured out how to finally make it happen uh but when i was doing it there was like one youtube channel that had old ass videos uh there was no current content coming out there was no um uh, current websites that, that i could find that had like updated information i didn't know where to go or how to find anything and so i was just searching googling arm wrestling workouts and how to arm wrestle and watching highlight videos of travis major and john Brzezink and uh, just trying to i had a rubber band in my house and i was playing video games and trying to do pronation and things on the rubber band. And I didn't know how to go about it. I, I lived with a roommate for a while, and, um, with two roommates and they're pretty big dudes. And I'd had them arm wrestle me until they got tired of it. Like, dude, I'm not arm wrestling anymore. Things stupid. And I didn't really know how to work out for it. I would just walk down to the, I was at an apartment complex. I'd walk down to the gym and just try to do bicep curl. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to, how to get into it. So finally I, uh, I went to a tournament and this is after I lost that 15 year old kid, and yada, 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 that story. If you guys heard it, um, but eventually I saw the kid again, like a year and a half later, after I wanted to be an arm wrestler for like a year and a half, I saw him again. I said, Hey man, you remember me? Like this and that. And he, he gave me the websites. Uh, he gave me the UAL website, which was up to date at the time. He gave me Alan Fisher's phone number. Uh, they gave me some, some contact info. And that's what really got me started into the sport, but it was very difficult there. I couldn't just Google it. And there wasn't a ton of websites and things to get, uh, to help, help me get into the sport. It was hard. It was hard. It was hard. I wanted to arm wrestle more than anything and I couldn't get in. It was like, it was special code and there was one website that was everybody was on it was the northeast board um which was like a, a forum 
and John Brzezink and everybody was on there. And it was like a training section, and tournament section, and general chat, all that stuff. But you had to you had to email the guy that owned the site and he had to make your username and password for you and send it back to you. So you had to like get approved. It wasn't you couldn't just sign up. It was it was a trip. Uh, but when I got in there finally and I got to read and comment and do all stuff, it was fantastic. And then that died. Uh, Facebook started getting real popular and then all arm wrestlers went to Facebook and that website kind of died out. Um, so anyway, if you are new and you are into the sport or you just like watching or you just want to, you want to find a way how to get into arm wrestling guys, number one thing you're going to want to do is, uh, is find a local team. That's the first thing you're going to want to do. There's a few websites and a few ways to do this. Uh, there's also the app, the arm bet app. You can go to, um, our arm fighter.com. Oh, right armfighter.com that's what it is right oh man why am i saying what are, why does that feel wrong someone that's what it is armfighter.com has the find a team button on there correct um and or and or uh worst comes worst you've tried both of those and you cannot find anybody near you you can shoot me a message and i will put in the footwork for you i i, I love to help people get into the sport i will put out a message i will track people down for you if uh, if you have already looked and can't find it yourself Shoot me a message on Instagram or something like that with, you know, where you're from, and, uh, and I'll help you uh, find out. Yeah, Armbet is a great app, but there's a website as well. I think it's arm, it's armfighter.com, armfighter.com. Yeah, and they have a find a team thing on there, which is really, really good. Um, so you're going to want to find a team. That's the step, first step, and preferably a team with some veterans on it, some guys that can really help walk you through things, help teach you safety, help build a foundation. Now, what a lot of people like to do is when – you go on a, get on a table with some guy that's been arm wrestling for a year or two. He's going to start throwing a million facts at you, right? Just because everything he's learned, he's all excited about it. He goes, oh, and then you top roll, and then you want to double, triple cap, and you want to create space, and then you want to do this flailing motion. Like they're going to get, they're going to jump to step nine, and they're not used to building how to how to build an arm wrestler. To build an arm wrestler, you have to lay a foundation. You got to you have to build the basics first, and then you slowly start building on top of that. And so a lot of people just like to spam random facts they've heard about arm wrestling. And with no consideration to what you're ready to learn and what you're ready to apply, right? It's like going to going to school and getting learning college courses like um, you know grade two. We we have to work up to that, right? And a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people don't understand that. And I always tell new guys, I give them the whole spiel that the safety step one, any conversation you have, you should have it's your first practice is how to not break your arm, how an arm break happens, and how to make sure it doesn't happen. Right. That's what that's the first conversation you should have as a new arm wrestler with any with somebody veteran. And you should feel confident in that. If you have any questions, you do not understand what they're saying in terms of safety and how to not break your arm. You should be asking questions or message me or Google or YouTube it or I will man. Make sure you're confident in how to avoid serious injuries in the sport. Right. That's and I always tell everybody you should compete as soon as you can, as long as you understand safety. Everything is about safety, guys. These arm breaks, not only does it suck for the individual, but it hurts and it damages our sport. It damages our sport greatly. If you guys are a part of a team or help run a team, put a, a lot of emphasis on safety, guys. It, I know it sounds like basic. Yeah, I know everybody wants to be safe, but you understand. If someone breaks their arm, not only is he going to probably be out of the sport, more often than not, they get out of the sport. Then everybody they know and they talk to is going to be never going to want to arm wrestle. And then anybody they ever meet, they're going to tell about how they have this cousin or this friend that broke their arm and then they're not going to arm wrestle. And then they're going to not let their kids arm wrestle. And then like it, it expands. One arm break is like a wildfire. You understand it damages the, the, the perception of our sport heavily, very heavily. So, and that's one of the biggest things, whatever you think about it, how often do you talk to someone about arm wrestling? And the first thing they say is, Oh, I don't want to break my arm. It's the first thing they say. And I have to like tell them, man, it's really easy to not break your arm, uh, et cetera. So, you guys, please take safety very serious for our sport, for the individual, but also for our sport to not let our sport get damaged and shrunk even more, right? Uh, but then you're going to want to learn the basics after that, guys. Learn the basics of arm wrestling. You're going to want to get on the table with someone that's going to teach you the basics of inside arm wrestling and outside arm wrestling. Inside arm wrestling generally is shoulder forward arm wrestling. Outside arm wrestling is shoulder backwards arm wrestling. And then there's a lot of variations within that, right? Um, but these are things that you should be hearing from these veteran guys that you go to your first team. If you're not hearing this stuff, then you might have to travel. You might have to travel a little bit. Don't think that the things that you see on YouTube that I, I know people where they're like, oh, I watched a bunch of YouTube videos. I, I get the arm wrestling thing. I understand the safety. I understand like uh, all the movements and pronation. I, I get it. No, you don't. 
you don't because if you haven't felt it you haven't trained it and you, you don't understand how how it's utilized in the sport by t- practical table application then you don't get it you, you don't understand it. if you haven't done it with actual arm wrestlers then, then it's a whole different whole different uh, ball game when you're actually applying it on table and having somebody else challenge it um let me catch one in the chat before i go a little too far um let's see Alex McDonald says Medias wins over Semrenko, Aslan, and Bord- uh, Aslanov and Bordalo. Yes, he does. He's very, very good. Um, Chancey, the weights, please send the FAL t shirts two months ago. <laughs> uh, Tip says, How do I become a member on your channel? I'm using my phone for YouTube. Uh, you'd have to open up a different web browser. Um, you have to go to YouTube through the web browser and then and then sign in, find my account, and then there should be the member, uh, join member button on there somewhere. Um, or uh, somebody in the chat, a moderator in the chat, can post a link to becoming a member. And there's a link that you can click on that'll take you there. Uh, let's see. Then SpongeBob says, big spoiler alert, alert. Half a strong of uh, strong man people like Alex Kredetcha train the elite, kills the Skowski, Pablo. All I can say is Adidas will be a sponsor. <laughs> uh, I just like watching, says Wing Zero. That's fine, man. That's totally cool. Um, do you take creatine? No, I don't currently. Uh, one of the biggest gripes with the sport, newbies teaching newbies not safe. I agree, uh, Sarah. Safety second. I once arm wrestled on dinosaur. At a boy, wing zero. And what's the number one safety rule in arm wrestling? If I can only, if I had to give one rule, ooh, pull backwards. That'd be the number one rule. I mean, there's there's other rules, and my whole speech has three rules I follow. Uh, but the most important one would be generally to pull backwards. Sideways is what puts the spinning pressure on your arm, and so do that minimally. S- minimal sideways pressure pull backwards the majority of it. Now, there's other stuff like keeping your elbow tucked in, et cetera, et cetera, and keeping your face connected to your hand, all these things. But if you're generally always pulling backwards, the odds of you breaking your arm go significantly down. Um, so pull backwards. There you go. If I had to pick one. Um, 2014, Devin had online 90 people. I don't get what that means. Uh, Bridget sharing the link tree. You guys, if you want to check out any of my socials, you guys go ahead and check that out. Corey Van Meter, what's going on? There's my boy. Tip says, I started arm wrestling at 13 years old. Long story, uh, but was in a driving accident when I was 16. Resulted with a broken neck. That was in 1977. Oh, man, it sucks to hear, man. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot of guys, and I have some I have some newer guys who are older getting into the sport. And they tell me about their injuries, and I'm just – I tell them, we'll try to find a way to work around it, man. We'll try to find a way to work around it. Um, some injuries, you know, can definitely hold you back from being able to arm wrestle, for sure. I mean, I, I hate to say it because it, it is a sport – that's supposed to be super accessible to everybody. Like everybody can kind of arm wrestle. But if you have significant, you know, neck, shoulder, elbow injuries or something like that, it just, there is a chance it's not, it won't work out. So, uh, I, and I hate giving into that. Uh, Trey Abbott says, uh, is there a specific movement or exercise you train close to almost daily? I've been told by a few people to do wrist curls and thumb training. Also, so, <laughs> um, so your hand and wrist, if things evolve with your hand and wrist, they say the muscle fibers are kind of like your abs or your calves. They're daily users. And so they recover faster than than other things. Because you got to think in regular life, you know, back when we were cavemen, we're using our hands and our wrist all the time. So they're, they're more conditioned and they can handle more uh, heavier workload. So people say you can train those daily. Do I train anything, the same thing daily? Uh, if anything, it would be, it would be hand. Like I'll, maybe I'll do grip. Or rice bucket or things like that but i don't i no longer train anything hardcore daily ever the same thing every day i used to um and i saw i didn't see a lot of gains when i was doing everything daily i did not see a lot of gains once i started breaking it up to two to three times a week then i started seeing progression uh in cupping and rolling and all those things um so yeah i do two to three heavy cupping days a week um, and i see a lot more uh, progress Wing Zero says, I started uh, watching arm wrestling during COVID lockdown. A random uh, wall Devin Laird video shows up when I was watching street fighting videos. There you go. Andy Beckett says, hey, Derek and Chad, hope all good. All is good. Yes, all is always good, man. We're here. We're here. We're just, I'm, I'm chilling. Todd, you guys have an energy drink? You guys are chilling. Look at your phones or your computers. We're good. We're good. It could be a lot worse for all of us. It could be a lot worse for all of us. Uh, Sideline Star, what's going on? Another member in the chat says, uh, should I order shirts from your site? A size up or do they uh, do they shrink a lot um no they're 50 50 blend they don't shrink a lot um I, 
see, I think that when she went to Bridget is in the chat, the one that handles it. But I believe once you go past a certain size, like two or three X, the shirt brand switched. Uh, because once we once we got around my size, I normally wear like a three or a four, but a four was really big on me. But I had some friends order mediums who were mediums. And they said it was pretty tight. Um, so I'm not sure. Bridget, uh, Bridget Sexness in the chat, she'll be able to chime in on that. Um, but I don't believe it shrinks very much. But if you're below like a 2X, then uh, definitely order true to size. Um, if not, maybe a tiny bit bigger. Um, let's see. Um, and also um, discount code AW Derek. Yeah, discount code. Save yourself a little bit of money, man. Um, I can't arm wrestle anymore, but I love the sport. Doesn't get any better since tip. Yes, sir. I agree. Paul Den says, uh, "Do you deal with John A? Huh? Who that? <laughs> um, White Wolf said he got two XL as true to size. There you go, Paul Den. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about, Paul. Mark KDX Rider says, uh, "Do you know what?" NTNE's AK Whisper gym numbers are. I, I arm wrestle at 165. I'm curious how far off I might be in gym strength anyway. My boy ET does not lift weights. <laughs> uh, ET currently is on a, a two to three times a week practice schedule. Um, he's There was a period of time where he was getting into lifting a little bit, but he's arm wrestling right now. He's just arm wrestling all the time. Um, but he's hardcore with it. We're talking about him getting into more lifting. He has a full gym in his garage, um, but Previous, like the last couple, like year and a half, two years, it's just been a ton of table time. Uh, so he almost is two or three times a week with some, because because he's 165, there's a lot of strong guys that can give him a run, and so he gets good work on the table. Uh, but yeah, he's just arm wrestling a lot, man. I wish I had some awesome numbers to throw your way, and I'm sure he can put up some cool numbers. Uh, but he's just arm wrestles all the time. Um, Bridget, I just ordered the third shirt. It says Lloyd Christmas. Thank you, man. Um, the shrink is very minimal. Says Lloyd Christmas. There you go. More people that have bought shirts in the chat. Uh, Carolyn says, not baggy. They're modern, modern, flat, flattering, true to size cut. Large, in my opinion, A1 quality blend. Thank you. Uh, Solitude says, A.W. Derek, competed for the first time ever on the 10th, ended up having one of the best days of my life and getting third place in the Twitter Plus class. I am still sore. That's awesome to hear, man. Um, I yeah, Like I said, man, I'm a big believer in people competing. As soon as you understand safety or are confident you're not going to snap your arm in half, then go compete. Go compete, man. That is the best environment. That is the, the funnest thing to do. I don't understand how people could get into this sport and train for like, I know people that have trained for like two or three years before they competed. I don't get it. Like the best part is competing. Once I was on that stage and this guy's screaming in my face and fans and people in the crowd are screaming, and the referees are there. And there's, it's such an intense moment. Like that's, that's what we're here for, man. That's the fun stuff. That's the, I mean, whether you win or lose, I mean, it's still a very intense moment and how you handle that win or that loss also shows a lot about who you are and in your future in the sport. So uh, big believer in competing. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm very happy to hear that, man. Congratulations on getting third place in your first tournament. That, that's great. Uh, uh, Sarah says, Derek, here's the website you were talking about. Where is it? I didn't see it. I don't see it. Um, let's see. Lloyd, not like coming out of Polar Dive. Uh, Jeremiah, I uh, hope you're doing great, Derek. Yes. Doing great, man. I hope you were doing fantastic as well. Um, oh, did Sarah? Yep, Sarah's messaging me the link. Okay. So let me see if I can. Yep, it is armfighter.com. I was correct. Um, no. Crap, crap, crap. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's armfighter.com. It's armfighter.com. You guys check that out if you guys want to find a team. Um, Arm Wrestling Josh. Yo, what's going on? Another one of my teammates in the chat. Good to see you. Hopefully you're lifting weights, Josh. See you at practice on Sunday. Um, Sideline Star says, have you ever seen your stats yet on your card? If not, what stats do you think will be the highest? I don't know, man. Given my my lot, my losing streak, I don't even – I'm scared to see what stats they would put on the card. Although, you guys, I'm on Devin's cards. I, I, I didn't even know. I did Someone uh, chance messaged me today talking crap, of course. Uh, but he said that uh, that I'm on the playing cards that, that Devin released on Armbet. Um, so I guess I'm uh, – he put all. He put me as a YouTuber. There's like a YouTuber section, and he put me there. I'm happy to be on the playing cards. A YouTuber, and he put Chance as like, I mean, I guess it makes sense as like an up and comer or young young guns. He put Chance on there, or as a YouTuber. But at least he put me. There's like different sections. There's a YouTuber section, and then there's like different categories within that, and then there was like Beast or something like that, or, or, and I was in that one. So anyway, but uh. 
Yeah, he'd asked me a while ago if it's cool if he uses my likeness for something. I said, yeah, it's cool. Um, anything that helps grow the sport, I mean, it's whatever. I mean, eventually, eventually I might hit him up and be like, hey, you know, what's up with – now I'm going to release some cards. I'm going to release some shirts. I want your face on it, Devin. All right? All right? Because now, now this is how we're doing. This is our relationship, right? I'm on your cards. You're on my shirt that we're selling on AW Switch, right? Bridget, write that down. We're going to put Devin Larry shirts up. That's it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know the stats, man. It's scaring me just to think about the stats. Although, I guess when I go to East versus West 9, I'll have cards. I think they're doing them each event. Because, like, I have these ones from the last East versus West that I went to. I, this is all the cards, and they're all signed. Um, so I have this. So I wonder if, if they do it every event, then, yeah, I guess I guess your boy will have his own card, which would be awesome. I mean – even if I never do another thing in the sport, at least when I'm 80, I can pull out that card and show my daughter and I was on a playing card at some point, which is kind of cool, which is really cool. Uh, defense Foster, howdy, howdy. What's going on, man? Uh, Bridget Sexton says, depends which shirt, 60-40 shirts, except Texas AW. That shirt is 50-50, which is this one. Uh, Texas shirts, I switched the brand to try to find a new brand. Minimal shrinking. I think they are true to size. There we go. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Carolyn says, go to attorney. Any chance you uh, you get and sign up both hands. That's right. Uh, Solitude says, Derek, uh, that tournament was on a Saturday and my first ever practice was on the Wednesday earlier that week. So many dudes told me uh, they know guys who practice one or two years and haven't done one. Yeah, it's weird. They A lot of well, people that do that, that do the whole practicing for years without competing, they, they want to do well. They want to go to their first tournament and do well. That's the thing. They want to train until they feel like they're ready to win a tournament. But, like, there's a lot of things. You're undervaluing tournament experience. Learning how to arm wrestle in a tournament is way different than practice. And also, you're putting a ton of pressure on yourself, man. Spending years uh, lifting and training before you go to a tournament, that's the amount of pressure you're putting on yourself to actually do well at that first tournament. And then if you don't do well, what are you going to quit? You spend all that time preparing to get first place. Like, you know, I don't know. It's, it's a really weird, rough route um, and inefficient. Um, Efron C says, Jeff Hale versus Brian Shaw, day one. Who wins if nobody holds back? Um... Uh, you give me a week with Brian Shaw, then uh, to just train with his current strengths. Uh, I don't think Jeff would be able to reel Brian into a hook. Um, but who knows? If he got, if Jeff got Brian into a hook, then I think Jeff could win. Would win. Uh, Bridget sharing the link tree again. Thank you, man. Uh, Carolyn says, uh, I, "I know how magical it is. I went to my first tournament this year. Also, it's so much fun." Um, represent the sport, awswitch.com, discount code AW Derek, <laughs> Bridget sharing the links. Uh, kickbacks from Devin White Wolf says no. I'll, like I said, man, we're gonna we're gonna play the game. Um, Carolyn says, YouTuber, only a few can truly do it so good. Elite level, he's trolling you, Derek. I know Devin's trolling me always. Joe Woodland says, That's me, been creeping. What's you? Um, big brain moves to the satellite star. D, uh, D Blake 1995 says, what's a workout routine for beginners? Uh, okay, so for beginners, if you want to talk about workouts, um, like I said, table time is the most important thing you have to learn how to do. Um, in this country, it, it's different overseas, and they view the sport different and it is approached differently. In this country, if to, most people when they get into arm wrestling are going to want to arm wrestle, right? They're going to want to be on the table often uh, having fun. So you have a practice day. We'll say for me, it's Sunday. Practice day is Sunday. If you are a newer person, your elbows are going to be trashed, trashed after practice, right? So putting heavy strain on them is, is going to be difficult for a while, right? So you might not be able to do a heavy bench press, for instance, up until Thursday or Friday, right? Especially when you're when you're first beginning. So one of the biggest things you want to do is, as a newer arm wrestler, is start training your hand and wrist. That is priority number one. It's going to grow from practice, but also you can you can isolate it enough where your practice injuries shouldn't hold back your hand and wrist too much, as long as you don't damage your wrist, I guess. Uh, but assuming your wrist doesn't get hurt from practice, then you can still train your forearms. So that's cupping, rising, rolling, you know, sinking, supination, all, all the things. Uh, train that because that takes years to grow. This is so much tendon and connective tissue in here um, that it takes a long time to make significant gains in your hand and wrist. So start that on day one as soon as you can. Just get a little basic pulley or go to the gym and get a basic handle. You don't even need to buy anything crazy. Use the handles at the gym. That's fine. And just start doing cupping and, and pronation and rising. Just start getting it in, right? D low weight, high rep. Build a foundation. Get used to the movement. Get used to understanding how to isolate it. 
build that risk because it's gonna you're gonna have to keep doing it all the time, right? So just start start trading the hand and risk right away. Um, now I, I won't if if anything if by Wednesday or Thursday you want to feel you feel like you can start lifting, then cool. I would advise doing uh, machines first if you're gonna be in the gym. Machines you don't have to stabilize, right? That's gonna hurt your elbows. So if I'm really beat up but I'm dead set on on lifting. I'll go to a machine. I know it's not nearly as cool as doing free weights and things like that, but the stabilization is what can really hurt the elbow. So if it's on a track, you can just push it or move it, and it keeps it from damaging or hurting your elbows too much. Or the next step would be like a bar. Next step would be like free dumbbells and, and dumbbell weights, right? So stay, stay in the machines. Now, the most important goal is that for each Sunday or each practice, you feel 100%, right? That's the most important thing. So what, however we got to get you from practice to practice and you feel ready to arm wrestle on Sunday, that's the most important thing when you begin, 100%, right, is that you have good practices where you feel good and you're able to learn and, and work on things. Because you're going to be making so many physical gains. At, at your first practice, not only are you gonna, your muscles going to get tore up and they're going to grow, your joints are going to get beat up and they're going to solidify. The, the knowledge you have is going to explode in terms of safety and how to do a moves. There's so much you're going to gain from being on the table at practices and you're, for the first – I don't know, seven, eight months. There's so much you're going to gain from that, that that is the priority hands down, right? And making sure that you're in a good good uh, spot and able to practice every Sunday is, is priority number one, right? By far. If you can do some wrist work, cool, do some wrist work. If you can do some pull-ups and things like that, cool, add those in. But make sure you go to practice feeling good and ready to practice. Um, then after that, like you can – Start adding in other things. So I'm not. There's not going to be a hardcore uh, gym routine that you're going to give a brand new guy. Um, if, but like I said, if anything, hand and wrist. Maybe start working on the compound movements like uh, neutral grip pull-ups, dips, things like that, and then slowly building a foundation um, geared towards arm wrestling. Right. Um, so, um, Ken Kung says, "What up, brother? What's going on?" Uh, Carolyn says, "Solitude. That's so awesome. Glad you. Uh, glad you are." Strength is the wonder treatment. Uh, Paul Dent says, when are you going to rematch Austin Jaggers? Um, I haven't really thought about it too much. Um, I'm prepping for my match right now. I'm not really thinking about any other matches after this. Um, at some point, I mean, there's definitely names I need to I need to go after. <laughs> and I definitely want to give um, chances to people up and coming because everybody said Derek, so he'll never pull down, which I did with Austin. Right, I was ranked above him, and I pulled down and gave him the match. Uh, nothing, about, nothing wrong with that. Um, I do want to pull um, Todd Hutchings. I do need to have a rematch with Tim because he, he's been. I've been hearing more and more rumors that he wants it, um, and I said we would. No, no problem. I know he gave me the matches both times. I owe it to him to give him the match uh, when he wants it back. Um, obviously, Austin Jaggers and me. Uh, there's the Corey and me thing. Um, at some point, I don't know me chance over arm wrestle, but yeah, there's that. Um, so there's definitely some matches ahead of me that I, I'd be excited to arm wrestle against. Um, be prepared for years of pain, brother, says Louis Christmas. Morzov is killing in his kid. Who is Corey West? Yeah, if you guys haven't seen um, moderators, can someone post a link to the video, the core sports video? I think it's a core sports video about Morzov finding Corey West in uh, in Dubai. It's pretty funny. It actually had me smiling and laughing. It was pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, Tip says, I ordered a deck of cards from Armbet. Costs 35 bucks. I'm probably going to have to order some as well. I mean, if my face is on, I don't know what I look like. I haven't seen a picture of my card. If anybody finds it, send me send me a picture of my card on there. I don't know what they made it look like. Um, Morozov just got casted for extraction three because <laughs> uh, Levon was just an extraction two, so they're saying Morozov got cast for extraction three. That's funny, Lagu. Um Let's see. Trey Abbott says the real question: uh, Will Derek sign our arm bet cards? Of course. You send it over here, I will sign it. No problem, man. I'm a man of the people. Dave Anderson, full deck, but no Jody. Schmo looking swole. Oops. I mean, you know. <sighs> yeah, sitting at 340. And for me, that's not very heavy. Right? But we're, we're steady increasing. Um, Tip says, yes, I would love to get all my cards signed. That would be near impossible. 54 cards. Mark KDX Rider, can you beat Gabby at rope climbing? I certainly can't. LOL. Nah, not the way she does it. Nah. Why rope climb ropes? I still have to. Circle around my feet. I actually I haven't tried climbing rope in years, in years. But uh, I mean, I am damn near 350 pounds. Uh, climbing rope is not going to be the strongest suit for me. Um, <laughs> I don't know how far I'd go with just my arms. We'd have to see. Um, Trey Abbott says, "I know Devin will sign stuff if you mail it to him." There you go. Tip says, "I saw your card. You look pretty. I look pretty. You saw my card. Someone, someone sent this to me on Instagram. I want to see what my card looks like." 
Uh, John Teller says they should have just cast the entire Georgia team for that movie. <laughs> the Schmo, you look way better though, bro. Weight isn't everything, especially when it's crap weight. LOL. Yeah, it needs to be quality muscle, my friend. Quality muscle, my friend. Uh, yeah, with going going intense and eating and Bridget meal prepping for me because she's amazing. You guys, she was here for like six hours of the day cooking up a storm. Pounds and pounds and pounds of food. We even did protein pasta. Uh, I like mac and cheese. And so, and I like, I'm old school. I, I like regular craft mac and cheese. If you say you like Velveeta, shells and cheese, we have a problem. Anyway, I like regular craft mac and cheese. But uh, the, we were trying to find ways to improve these little bowls that she makes me. And so we ended up taking all the, uh, the craft mac and cheese powders out. And then we bought protein pasta, like pasta made out of, I don't know if it was chickpeas. I forget what was, what was in it, but the, the noodles themselves are protein pasta. Um, and uh, so she made that and it turned out fantastic. It turned out fantastic. So it tastes like Kraft, but it has the, the protein noodles in there with a ton of ground beef and sweet potatoes and all the stuff. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a big debate I get with people about Velveeta shells and cheese versus Kraft mac and cheese. I, you know what? This is... I don't care. I don't care. This is this is my uh, this is my YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you guys: Are you guys Kraft mac and cheese or Velveeta shells and cheese? Don't. Oh my god. I don't. How do you spell Velveeta? L e t a. You guys, this is a very important poll. This might be the most important poll we've ever had on my channel. Oh, Schmo, are you... Oh, God, guys, no, come on. There has to be some real ones in here. Please tell me there's some real ones in here that, that are Kraft fans. Come on. Thank you, White Wolf. Kraft, 2,000%. That's what I'm talking about. This is important. <laughs> this is an important poll. Kraft mac and cheese or Velveeta uh, shells and cheese. Thank you, Kraft is winning. Thank you. Thank you. We've got some true Americans in here. <laughs> oh. If you weren't, I mean, we're all raised on craft. <laughs> oh, Taylor Palmer Velt, come on, man, come on. Yeah, uh, Britt says Bridget's a real one, keeping our, our guy in check. Yes, she is doing amazing and always, always helping me out. We, a sideline star says we need that Ernie's match for revenge. At some point, we will dance. We will dance. Uh, Steve says, remember Matt Maska's video on his YouTube, how to make Velveeta mac and cheese. John Teller says, uh, I'm not American. I'm just cheap. <laughs> Kraft is quality, my friend. Says Sideline Star. That's right. Tip says, Kraft is a bomb. That's right. Um, if I'm not eating deer or elk, it's got to be Kraft. Mark Adex Harris says, I had a bad week at work. I can um, happily drop down to the Kraft and hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one's too good for that. If you feel like you're too good for Kraft and hot dogs or, or Top Ramen or something like that, man, we've all had hard times for sure. Uh, any contact with Hermes, my friend, after that snub? Um, no, we haven't We haven't talked. He sent me a message of apologizing for everything. He's liked a few of my posts. I have not messaged him. Um, I'll see him. I'll see him around. Solitude says, I'm almost 100% positive. I read that people who prefer Velveeta are linked to having a way lower IQ. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> uh, Schmo says, crap. Might as well just put cheese in a can on those noodles with that bootleg meal. Schmo! Look at the look at the poll. Twenty we have twenty votes. We have forty seven people in here. We have twenty votes. Everybody's like, "This is an arm wrestling channel. Why are we voting on mac and cheese?" I get it. You know, just got, the topic came up. But still, Kraft is destroying Velveeta. That's the important part. <laughs> Bootleg raised. <laughs> we weren't all raised privileged. All right, I was raised lower middle class for sure. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I was. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna destroy my mom and say I was raised poor, but. Lower middle class. Um, yeah, dude, craft was what got me through the hard times. Um, okay, so back on topic. Uh, you find a team, you're learning from this team, then you want to schedule, in my opinion, your first event. Uh, soon, as soon as you understand safety, once again, go to your first event, make contacts, you would network, you got to get a hold of people, understand that you can travel to other practices. The more hands you get a hold of, the better. Uh, so start learning how to, how to arm wrestle, get different against different length arms, different size hands different strengths and things like that. Um, it's good to travel around. You don't have to stay with one team 24-7. You can always move around. My teammates know they're welcome to go to any other practice as long as they know where home is. As long as they know home is with us and their allegiance lies with my team, then 
by all means, go travel, go to practice wherever you want, man. I, I will not hold it against you. Um, yeah, so tour around, get a hold of people. Uh, that's, that's what the sport's all about. And it's building that, it's understanding that the best thing, the best thing about arm wrestling, for sure, and, and the internet does not show this. If you guys are just fans of arm wrestling, you're just watching from YouTube, there's something you cannot see and you cannot feel or understand, and it's the very best thing about arm wrestling, is the actual in-person community of arm wrestling. The actual community, the actual people hanging out with them in person, not what you see on YouTube, is easily the best thing about the sport. 100%. And, and, I, and anybody that's fully into it will agree with me. Um, the, the, the friendships and, and the brotherhood and sisterhoods and all the, the, the it's like, it's like a family. Like my closest friends are on my arm wrestling team. Um, and so that's really a, a big driving factor in a lot of things I do and the way I train. And when I'm, when I lose guys, one of the first things I think about is how much I let my guys down. Like I feel like I let my teammates down. I feel like I let my best friends down. I'm trying to represent for my, my state, and my, my city and my team above all else. And, um, the ones that help get, help me get there. So it, that is a whole driving factor is a whole thing to consider um, the community and the people that help promote you and help push you and help train you and help get you where you're going. Um, uh, it's a really important part. Uh, sideline, Bridget says the people love me. People do love me. Uh, sideline star says, how did your parents react when you started arm wrestling as a pro? My dad is always supportive. My dad is supportive 24 seven of anything I do. hundred um, percent. You guys may have seen him in videos. He was on here. I think he hopped in here like two weeks ago. Um, he's always been involved. My mom is supportive now. My mom always wants the best for me. And it's always like, uh, is that a waste of your time? Is that a waste? Are you wasting time again? Is it that? And then finally, when she sees something producing and, you know, then she'll, she'll start getting behind it a little bit. When she starts seeing the trips are paid for and them, you know, given lessons and there's thing. And it's like, a part of my life and then make money at it a little bit. And it's a thing for me. Uh, then, you know, she starts being more supportive of it. Uh, I, but I understand, you know, she wants, she wants to be hard on me to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. So of course it makes sense. But uh, as of right now, both my parents are supportive of me arm wrestling and they understand it's my life. John Teller says uh, those Burger King Mac and Cheetos though, I have not had them. Trey Abbott says next time Todd Etchings and Craig goes to practice. I'll keep you updated, Derek. Uh, just joined their team and saw Paul Lynn, Artem, and all kinds of awesome strong beats. Yeah, that's a nice crew. Um, DF says, Giga D, YouTube hasn't been pushing notifications. Those sons of... Mm. Captain Obvious says, Craft for Life, even those fancy restaurants with their five different real cheeses can shove it. <laughs> Schmo says, DF, tell Derek it's all the uh, opposite of whatever Derek likes or wants. Uh, Captain Obvious says, Captain Obvious, is that Bridget? <laughs> inside joke, inside joke. Uh, and hey, Derek and chat, what's going on? Frank Callahan, what's going on? Hi, Derek. Just got done with uh, doing my armrest workout. Guess what? Lots of pulley work. Atta boy, Frank. When you're ready for a soup match with me, let me know, Frank. DF says, uh, Schmo Velveeta cheese, shells and cheese is life. David Chapman armrest, what's going on, man? Uh, Derek, have you considered dropping down in height to compete at, at a shorter weight class? Um, I've considered it. It's just the procedure is very expensive and I really don't want to go through that. And there's a lot of pain involved. Um, so I just think I'm going to stay six foot eight ish. I'm six, eight with shoes on guys. I, that might be six, seven. I don't, I, I just, you know, I have shoes on when I'm around people. What does it matter? But uh, I, I think when I mentioned last time at my, at my grandparents' house, I had shoes on on six, eight. So I might be I'd be six seven, but either way, I'm still taller than Devin. I'm not getting an inch shorter than Vitali. I'm a little bit taller than Brian Shaw. So if I'm lying. They're all lying, all right? <laughs> so, all right, I don't want to hear anything. Bridget Sexiness with a two ninety nine super sticker says, "My hero." Oh, you're my hero. You're my hero. Uh, Captain Obvious, yay DF or yeah, yay, yeah DF. I never get notifications anymore. I don't know what's going on, guys. Um, Frank Callahan says, I'll soon match you. Bring it on, Frank. Bring it on. Uh, Tip says, Derek, do you have an email I can write you? I want to explain my love for the sport. I have a story to tell. Um, an email? Yes. Um, I don't know. Should, hey, we're, are we 
on Instagram together? Or wait, I feel like have we we've talked off here before, right, Tip? On Messenger? Message me on there and I'll send you my email address. Um, what's with that wild hair? This one? Bridget, so you guys, she shaved my eyebrows the other night. We're laying there in bed and she's just staring at me, you know, like they do, creepy. And she just goes, your eyebrows are insane. Have you ever trimmed those? And I'm like, just back off my eyebrows. And she goes, let me try, let me trim them. And I'm like, yo, like back off. And then she she went to the bathroom, got a trimmer, like jumped on my chest like like big brothers do to little brothers and shaved my – trimmed my eyebrows. Like who cares? Who cares about the eyebrow length? Does anybody? Does anybody in here care about your eyebrow length? <laughs> she attacked me, guys. She attacked me. Um, let's see. Uh, 220 catch weight, two thousand dollars on the line. I'll fly to Cali. 220 catch weight. Now you got to start eating and become real man size, Frank. Stop, stop being little boy size, and start gaining. But it's time to get big. Uh, DF says grilled hot dogs, cut up uh, like Pac Men, and put it in the shells of cheese. Crazy. Uh, the Schmo says I can help you with a pretty cheap procedure that'll remove your legs. <laughs> Go extra with crumbled bacon. Hey, no height reduction. Thanks, as much. Oh, guys, sorry, I gotta stay tall. Uh, Ilian Dimitrov, uh, when I arm wrestle with friends, I always get opened up with my right hand. Um, I'm left-handed by nature, and I just feel weak to pronate their cup. What would be a good exercise to do at home? Um, first, I would look at how you're pronating into their hand. Uh, remember, remember, fingertips. Where's my hand? Found it. This is the weakest part of the hand, fingertips, right? Because it's the furthest away from the palm, right? So when you are top rolling, you're trying to attack someone's hand, you have a grip, you need to be finding pressure in their fingertips. If I am top rolling this way, look at, look at how those fingers aren't really moving. If we're saying go and I'm top rolling this way offensively, see how those fingers tips aren't even moving? I need to be targeting fingertips. See how the fingertips are moving? See how I'm prone, posting backwards and pronating into the fingers? Yes. The fingertips are the weakest part. So find a way to put pressure into their fingernails. If, if their hand is too strong, you can't pronate directly through it, then you go around it. Right? You go around it. Okay. Um, so the first thing I would look at when you're talking about how you're too weak in a movement or a situation, I'd want to see how you're doing. Are you being efficient in that movement? Are you really doing it correctly? Are you going into their palm or are you going around, right? It's a big thing. So after we dial that in, then we can talk about just general strength. Now, if you want to talk about pronating, pronating um, is the ability, is the, is the action of turning your going palm down, basically from thumb up to palm down, actually from palm up to, to, to palm down. Um, now, you want to do that while always contracting your elbow. Your elbow should be bending while you do it. Your pronator teres, there's two pronator muscles in the arm. We go, we go over this every so often on the channel, you guys. There's a little muscle here in your wrist, and then there's a big one right here. The big one right here splits into two. The connection above your elbow makes this muscle an elbow flexor because it connects. It's an elbow flexor, your pronator teres. And then the other part connects down here above the elbow, and that is just based, just does pronation, right? So to isolate your pronation, you should be moving your elbow as you're doing pronation, not this, right? You should be moving your elbow. So you can do it with rubber bands. You can do it with a lot, a few different ways. Make sure that elbow is moving as you're pronating, right? When you do a basic hammer curl, you are technically training your pronator somewhat. It's not isolated, but because your pronator is an elbow flexor, just doing a hammer curl hits your pronator somewhat. Right, and there, by pronating, you can isolate it further and things like that. But keep that in mind. So elbows are moving while we're pronating. Now you can talk about where you're going to put the pronation. Is it going to be around up here? Is it going to be below your wrist, around your thumb, above your thumb? There's different spots. Um, but yeah, move the elbow. Rubber bands are fine. Just sit there and start getting in work um, on pronation. But remember, top rolling is not a pronation-based movement. Top rolling is about posting. It's about hammer curling. It's about your ability to bring your arm this way. Some people call it back pressure. I call it posting pressure. 
It's about being able to bring your hand back this way until their wrist goes straight. And then it's once you're back here, once you're back here, it's a dash of pronation. That's it. It's just a dash. It's just a little bitty dash of pronation. And then their hand is busted back. Hey, Mr. Hand, Mr. Hand. So if you're top rolling, I'm not pronating into their hand that way, right? I'm pulling backwards towards me until their wrist gets flattened out because they're trying now at this point, they're trying to keep their elbow down. And so all the pressure goes in their wrist while I'm pulling backwards. And that wrist goes, ugh, gets flat. Once that wrist is flat, it just needs a little bit of pronation on the top just to finish it out. That's it. So I know top rolling visually is a very pronation based movement because visually you see the guy's wrist go, Bleh. And so you're like, oh, man, that guy pronated his wrist wide over. That's not what happened. He posted so hard that that guy's wrist went flat trying to hold on, and then he added a dash of pronation. That's why I say you pronate more. There's more poundage of pronation pressure in a deep hook than there is in a top roll. It's just visually looks like there's more pronation in a top roll because the wrist gets busted back. But there's more in a, in a hook, you guys. There's more pronation in a hook. There's more pounds of pressure. Anyway, so just keep that in mind. Rubber bands, those are fine at home. Keep using those. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, Captain Obvious says, I throw some sweet peas in the mess to talk about mac and cheese. I love it. Uh, David Chapman Armour saying, if there was a six foot um, height class, it would be the most stacked with the most suspicious variation of heights. <laughs> are you allowed to arm wrestle on your knees? No. Dropping height. Um, well, I mean, technically, yeah, you are allowed to wrestle your knees, I think, but no one does. Um, my wife does that too. Only the chicks care about ours. <laughs> I know, right? I get a, I get the eyebrow crap from my wife. <laughs> I guess it's normal. All right. Joe Nelson says, what's up, everybody? I don't care about my eyebrows, although I've been attacked with scissors because ex-girlfriend slash wife. Hola, Mr. Hand, says Captain Obvious. Trey Abbott, uh, at least y'all have eyebrows, mine are invisible slash blonde. Taylor Palmer says, do you do online coaching? Um, no, I don't currently. I'm thinking about getting back into it. I, I'm 100% tell you guys, I mean, I've kind of mentioned this, but I don't do the online coaching, man, because I don't like giving subpar products out to people. If I tell you I'm going to help you with arm wrestling, I, I, I have to help you with arm wrestling. Like, I'm going to be, I'm in it with you. Why we? I want to see. I want to see the gym workouts every day. I want to see videos of your practice. We're going to talk about rep sets. I want to see how you're feeling. We're going to answer questions. Me and you are going to be best friends, right? Because I can't just put out a template. I can't just write a template and be like, all arm wrestlers follow this. Now pay me thirty dollars a month for the new template. I can't do that because I know that's not how you train arm wrestlers. Because arm wrestling, first off, practice. When you practice. Your week is going to look different. Every week, your week is going to look different. Every week, you're going to be able to do different things at different levels. You're not going to be able to do 90% of your max bicep curl after a really hard practice. And maybe you had a really hard practice, or maybe you had a really easy practice, or maybe you only top rolled, or maybe you only pressed, or maybe you only left-handed, or maybe this, like, and so there's too many variables in arm wrestling. So when programming for an arm wrestler, you have to be hands-on. You have to be every week. We're going to, okay, practice was last week, or I mean, yesterday. Okay, let's look at this week. How do we feel? All right. And now what's the most important thing for us? What's the most important thing for Taylor, right? Taylor, right now you're a top roller and we want to we want to get you um, a more crisp top roll while also building up some hook pressures. OK, cool. Everybody has their own list of things they want to do, which is another reason I can't put out a bland program for everybody to follow. And so, like, it takes too much one on one. Now, when I did it, I ended up charging two hundred dollars a month. Right. That's what I got up to two hundred bucks a month. And the amount of time I was giving people. Because I can't not do that. It's not within my personality to give you a shit program and just to let, watch you fail. And so I felt bad because even $200 wasn't worth the amount of time I was giving. I'm spending like six to eight hours talking to client or to customers a day. And I only had like two. I had like, I had like two uh, students and I would spend like six to eight hours. They would, because when people get into arm wrestling, they get hooked. They get really hooked. And they want to know everything. They're going to be all, and which is awesome. And I love to answer that. But the amount of hours I was putting into that did not equate to $200 a month, like at all. And I can't charge people more than that. Who has more than $200 a month to spend on, on lessons? Like, so the amount of time I was putting into it, I would have had to charge people $1,000 of $1,500 a month um, or more. 
and I'm not going to ask someone for that. And I'm also not going to kill myself because I know I can't just kind of coach somebody. I can't give them shit programs. If I'm going to do it, I'm gonna, I, I go all in. And so I get caught in this weird spot, right, where it's just like, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm not going to put out a shitty program for people to follow that because you can't do that. You can't put a bland program out for everybody to follow. So I don't, I don't, I'm, I, I get stuck in a weird spot. I get stuck in a weird spot with that. Anyway, um, Elian says, wow, man, thank you so much for the thorough explanation. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Herman Dagas say the same. Um, Solitude says, uh, Derek, you think neutral grip pull-ups and hammer curls will help with your posting uh, or just the simple rise stuff Devin always talks about more? Uh, both. And right, well, if you're talking about rising, posting or rising, rising is wrist rise. Posting is pulling your arm back because you can post with your wrist up. Still po- posting is hammer curling backwards to me. Um, so, but yeah, neutral grip pull-ups and hammer curls will help uh, with your posting. As well, but um, yeah, if you want to do the wrist rise stuff that Devin does, that's fantastic as well. Um, let's see, King Hoddle, um, how does da- Big Dave beat Big Devin? Um, it's going to be a shoulder press. It's going to be very fast. It's going to be very early, and he's got to drive hard. Um, I don't think he's going to drag Devin. Devin's in really strong in the hook right now. I think Devin might be able to hold him off even in a standard hook right now. Um, so Dave's going to have to really drive, drive, drive early on. Uh, Schmo says. What in the F is with these pride emojis? I'm going to click on the smiley face uh, where the member emojis are. God, America is getting so. Oh, and I don't know if I should have read that. <laughs> You're going to get me banned on YouTube, Schmo. <laughs> Captain Obvious says, did Jerry hurt himself again? I uh, saw Hermes video calling him. <laughs> no problem. I, I don't know. I saw those as well. I haven't looked into it. Does anybody know Jerry actually got hurt? Uh, Solitude, my doctor mentioned me when talking about carpal tunnel because I had the tendon on my right side but not on my left. Sideline says, I hope the sport keeps growing so you can increase the rates. Um, Joe Nelson says, Bridget, got my shirt yesterday. Thank you. That was so fast. Uh, DF sharing the, the awswitch.com. Thank you. Bridget with a $1 super chat with the unicorn. Ang <laughs> uh, looks small next to Ray said, Silent Star. Yeah, Ang looks small when the match starts, though. Um, use code AW Derek for discount. Thank you, DF. Um, Schmo says, my statements are not a reflection of Derek or his opinions. <laughs> Thank you for clearing the air. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Um, what was I talking about? Hey, I was on topic with something. But, yeah, guys, just uh, I think I kind of covered the beginning. Get a sport. Find a team. Um, understand safety. Go to your first event as soon as you are understanding safety. And then, um, and then have fun with it, man. Just enjoy the community, enjoy making the friends, enjoy being competitive, and enjoy your, your time. Bridges access to the $3 super sticker. She's just dropping money. She's going to show up here. She's going to walk this door here in a little bit, but give my money back. Watch. First thing out of her mouth, you'll give my money back. <laughs> I'll pay you in other ways. You know what I'm saying? Uh, use code Devin's Forum for instant forum gains. Tip says, uh, I've been trying to find where I could become a member for the past 10 minutes. I opened another browser, signed in, but still didn't work. Uh, I will get this done before your next video. <laughs> Thank you, Tip. I appreciate that, man. Drew24, what's going on? Uh, Bridge says, DF, do you need a discount code? We can get you a discount code, DF. You want a discount code on the site, DF? I got you. Um, Sideline Star with a $1 super sticker. Thank you guys for all the support. Gunner Costas says, Craft sucks. Whoa. What? Kraft is, first off, Kraft is still destroying Velveeta in the polls. So, obviously, you are not in the majority on that that strong opinion you came in here with, Gunner. Kraft is amazing. How dare you? Bridget says I can play, pay her an eggplant. All right. Mark KDX Rider, uh, how would you fight off the can opener if you have a smaller hand? Stop holding on. Rise and make them hold on to you. Um... Bridget says, Bridget, it's not a discount. It's a game code, LOL. Oh, do you, have, do you want a discount code, though, man? I mean, if, you, if you're going to push the site, I'll give you a discount code. Uh, did you give your King of Table picks yet? Um, yes. I said that Devin is the, we're talking about just the favorites, not who I want to win. Devin's a favorite. Morozov's a favorite. Angan Tursi's a favorite. Um, on paper, they're, they're pretty heavy favorites. Um, but, you know, could be could be some upsets. Brad K, I can back pressure a lot, but I uh, opened my own bicep angle up, 
So getting that stronger and trying to fix that. See, uh, so you're talking about back pressure. I don't, so I think back, uh, for me, back pressure is your ability to slide your elbow backwards while maintaining a, a minimum of a 90, if not tighter uh, angle in your arm. So if I'm pulling my elbow back and my arm is opening up, that is too heavy of a back pressure lift. It needs to come together at the same time. Then it's a successful back pressure lift. So that's what I call back pressure, sliding your elbow back, using your back, your lats, while maintaining arm tightness. For me, that's back pressure. I know a lot of people call this back pressure, though. So just different definitions. Um, oh, there you go. DF's getting a discount code. All right. You guys have a little conversation about me. It's fine. I'm just running the channel, but you guys have your own conversation. It's cool. You bums pay, pay full price and help this man out, says the schmo. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Steve says, how many years um, of someone always competing in amateur would you start to consider it as sandbagging? That is that is a common question. So that there's, I think we all agree that there should be some kind of regulations on when you have to stop pulling amateurs and when you can continue to pull amateurs. Right? When what's the cutoff, right? But there's the thing: greed is a mother effort. Without cursing too much on my channel, um, promoters want and need entries. They get maybe the bulk of their entries, the bulk of the money that comes to a promoter is from the amateur class. To tell a promoter to turn away somebody because of some, you know, oh, he should be an amateur and take less money. That could be, they do right, left. That could be, you know, like 70, 80, some of these tournaments, a hundred dollars right there. They're not going to, they don't turn it down. They want the entries, right? So that's why there's very minimal, if not no restriction on who pulls amateurs because the promoters want money. They want entries. They want entries. They don't care. They don't care. So I could probably I could probably enter an amateur tournament at a local event or somewhere, and they'd probably let me do it. I guarantee there's tournaments in the country that I could they would let me enter amateur. I guarantee it. If I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do if I could pull multiple weight classes, and they would let me do it. And that's jacked up, right? That's messed up. So we can't leave it on where we can't because they won't leave it up to the promoters to decide who pulls amateurs and who doesn't. Now, when it comes to when you should as an individual stop pulling amateurs. I don't know, man. That's a that's a that's a race you run on your own. For me, when I did it, I told myself when I win what I consider a good amateur tournament, then I will retire that arm first place. Right? If I get gold first place at a class, maybe set the number of entries in your weight class. So if when I get first place in a in an amateur tournament with ten plus entries in my weight class, I will retire that arm in amateurs. That's how that's how I did. Right? I didn't have a set number. I just said when it was a good one. So I won some LA Fit Expo left-handed, and I won some UAL tournament right-handed. And then I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm done with amateurs. That's how that's how I did it, which I think is a good way to do it. But, yeah, there are some people that sit in it for years, and but then their excuse is, I don't really train for this sport, but they're also – they have a lot of knowledge, so should they be there? I don't know. But at the same time, you're in their shoes, right? So say you're, you're somebody you just love arm wrestling. You don't really train for it. It's just fun. You want to go compete sometimes. And you know you're not getting stronger at it because you're not training for it. And you know that you're going to enter pro and just get whacked every time. And so that's boring. But it's all – so it, it's a tough situation for a lot of people. And I, and I get that, right? Everybody always immediately looks down on the older guys that do amateurs. But I understand it's like you don't want to have a bad day, just get destroyed on a in a sport that you really don't care that much about. You do it for fun. You want to get some wins. You want to be competitive. And so you want to do amateurs. I get it. I get it. So it's 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 a rough thing to uh, to decide, man. I just just try not to be a douchebag. I guess if you think you can get wins in pro, I guess the moment you think you can get wins in pro, start pulling pro. You know what I mean? Like if the moment you not think, the moment you know you can get wins in pro, then maybe stop uh, start pulling pro. I guess right. But I don't I don't know of a specific rule set for when you need to stop pulling pro or stop stop pulling amateurs. I mean, um, I don't know, and it's it's different for each person, right? Like there's some people that just off the streets shouldn't pull amateur. Uh, there's people that definitely should. I don't know. It's I, I, don't, I wish I had a better answer for you, man. It's a topic I've thought about over the years, and I can just see it from both sides, uh, and I get it. Um, I don't have a better answer for you. People have asked me that so many times. I, just, I can just tell them how I did it. That's the only, the only way I can say it. Um, 
Didn't you face Morozov on latest notice? Yes, it was like a week or two. Two weeks? A week? Two weeks? Uh, Gunner Costa said, do you feel more comfortable slash strong inside or outside of a strap? Uh, what do you usually prefer? Uh, I generally, especially in the United States, have a strong hand and wrist. So I prefer to be outside of the straps. I'm fine being inside the straps. I train everything. But my hand can shine, my hand and wrist can shine outside the straps more than it shines inside the straps. Uh, so I guess I would prefer to be outside the straps. Shmo says, America for the code. Hashtag America for the code, where you pay full price to support small businesses. <laughs> King Harl says, if uh, all three matches at King Tail proved to be one-sided, does it harm the promotion? I believe so. I believe so. Uh, Drew24 says, Derek is going to give some someone some back pressure soon. Huh? John Teller, so is sliding your elbow back and pivoting, um, pivoting back while keeping your elbow in place both back pressure to you? Sliding your elbow back and pivoting. Wait, how do you pivot while sliding? That's impossible. You can't pivot off something if it's sliding. Right? It would it would just be hammer curling while it might wait. Am I tripping? You can't pivot off something while it's sliding, right? Because it the pivot point has to be solid. That's what it pivots on. Right? It might. Can you? You pivot off something while it's moving? You can't, right? I'm not tripping. Tell someone tell me I'm not tripping. If it's sliding, you can't pivot off it. You pivot off it by pushing on it, making it solid into a solid spot. Right? <laughs> um I don't know. Yeah, it's all back pressure. And it, <laughs> Drew says you're not tripping, but you might be tripping. Oh, John, I love you, death man. I'm getting real confused though. <laughs> uh, in our province, if you win a, a tournament like provincial, state, you have to pull pro. There you go. Smoke 18. Bridget with the one dollar super sticker. Bridget with the five dollar super chat says, "Pull day, can't wait." Oh, she's tracking my lifts. Yeah, it's pull day today. Uh, I got hammer curls and break. So everything, th thumb up and palm down today. Hammer curls or reverse curls. Excited. Uh, I got smoked by pro to amateurs. He was. Killing it in the East versus West qualifiers a couple months after. That sucks. Brad K says, your top exercise for building complete back pressure. <clears throat> so, like I said, my definition of back pressure, sliding your elbow back and staying tight. Um, I think neutral grip pull-ups are fantastic. Not only are they going to build the pressures necessary, but more importantly, they're going to be having uh, giving you muscle coordination, muscle synergy. You're going to get used to using a lot of muscles together at the same time, which is going to transfer really well over to arm wrestling and strap pulling specifically. So that's very good for learning how to use a lot of muscles at once, is like neutral grip pull-ups. Um, after that, it would be uh, hammer curls. After that, it would be um, uh, rising, wrist rise, um, and then pronation lifts, probably. Different pronation lifts. Um, I mean, I can get way more specific with it, but then we'd be here for an hour talking about specifically that. But um, I think we'll – We'll stay with neutral grip pull-ups. I think are fantastic for complete back pressure. Corey Van Meter, my teammate, my gym partner, says, yeah, not only that, but since the sport's so small, people also use the amateur class as an extra practice because not everyone has a team close to them. It's a bummer for everyone. True. Mark KDX writer, when you start beating your pro class buddies in practice, you know it's time. Schmo, Bridget, convinced Eric to top roll the world for us. Thanks. I'm training my top roll. Bridget says, he don't, he don't listen to me. I listen to everything you say, baby. You just, you know, you're the most important. Uh, Drew says, you're not tripping, but you, oh, sorry, I read that part. Um, John says, no, I mean, pivoting with elbow in place and sliding as two different ways of back pressure. Oh, no, no, pivoting with elbow in place would be called posting pressure to me. Back pressure would be sliding your elbow back. Garrick smoking that shaved AP. What? <laughs> Schmo says, for a moment in time, the momentum stopped when you transition from moving back to pivot, though it appears to be one move. Yeah, just made that up. How about a pool day, says Drew24? Pool day? Pivot in the rising? Maybe I'm the one tripping. <laughs> uh, I don't like swimming, says Bridget. Joe Nelson, I pulled an attorney this weekend. Now the short head of my right bicep won't flex. Had a three-minute streamer match. Oh, three minutes? That's so long on an arm wrestling table. That's crazy. Um, uh, Sideline star, you ever uh, run into an over-aggressive training partner? How do you handle it? Yes. Uh, so practice, guys. When when having practice, communication, as in any relationship with anybody, communication is key. 
you have to talk to your training partners. So you have to explain to them, hey, listen, I really want to work on this, especially if the rule of thumb in my practice is if you're the weaker guy in that moment on the table. Now, normally you could be the strong guy, but for some reason you arm wrestled three different dudes right before that. And you didn't sleep last night. Or for whatever reason, in that moment, he's the stronger guy than you. You'll know within five seconds of grouping up who's the stronger guy. Then the weaker guy has to communicate to the stronger guy what he wants to get out of this training session, right? He has to say, okay, uh, all right, you got me in these ways. Let me see if I can sink in my hook this way. Let me see if, you know, you have to find ways to challenge you. If not, the stronger guy is going to dump you a thousand times. He's going to work on his own move. That's it. And get off the table. And that's the end of that. So you have to communicate. Yeah, you're stronger than me. I get it. I get it. You can roll my wrist over and over again. See if you can beat me in a hook. Uh, see if uh, if I go first, if I can cup you in. You've got to find ways to challenge yourself to make this, this training pr um, productive for both of you. But if you don't speak up, if the weaker guy does not speak up, if, then forever hold your peace, man. There's people that go to practice that just slam into everybody. They exist. They definitely exist. And if you're openly talking to them and asking them to do things and they won't, that's a whole different discussion. But most of the time, 95% of the time, no one's talking. You grip up and you're just tired of that guy slamming you and then that's it. But you didn't actually ever tell him, hey, man, can you stop doing that? Um, I want to try to work on this. See if you can hold my hook. See if you can yada, 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 whatever it is that you want to work on. But you have to communicate. Uh, but there's definitely over-aggressive training partners. Um, they, all, they all exist. Um, but you just have to understand how to work with them to get what you want. Um, why will so what I miss? Me, I'm the aggressive training partner. It says Bridget. Drew24 says, Derek, uh, you coming to Brandon's this uh, next Sunday. Bunch of great people showing up. Multi-state. You can catch a ride with Benji Mack. Uh, I do not have any plans to go out there as of right now. I have uh, guests come into practice this Sunday uh, already. So we're going to be in town here. Um, unless Bridget tells me we're going somewhere else. Apparently she tells me what we're doing. Um, Carolyn says, I did a five membership earlier. People didn't get the membership. YouTube is getting really sketchy. Oh. Well, either way, Carolyn, thank you. it's the thought that matters. Thank you so much for trying to do that. I don't know why it's being weird. Um, Bridget says, why am I not on the board? Um, what Super chats. What super chats did you do? It's for the, big, the biggest single super chat. I'm not doing math over here. You want me to add up all your super stickers? <laughs> You're Chave's mother. You, need, you don't need to be on the board. Um, was here like seven hours ago. I had to give a... Uh, Appaloosa bath, way, way, way too much road run. Oh, uh, the beta test game X Deviant looks great, just in solid or defiant. Sorry, Deviant, defiant. Uh, who you got in the match between Larry and Leonidas? I've never pulled Leonidas. Uh, I'm assuming they would do it left handed. Bridget, the top super chat is $20. Um, I don't know how strong the United States uh, hand and wrist is. Larry top rolls left-handed. He's a pretty dedicated top roller. And he's very strong at it. I think very, Larry is top five left-handed in North America at 242s. Um, I don't know how strong Leonidas's wrist is, man. I think if they got into a hook, I think Leonidas would do well. I, it's just whether or not he could get uh, Larry into a hook or not. Um, yeah, because they're both lefty, so I imagine that the match would be lefty. I mean, they're both lefty dominant. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I'd have to know more about Leonidas, about like his strength levels. Exactly. I, I'd rather feel it so I can know. Uh, DSM 30 says, do you agree a belt and cupping exercise is all you need for arm wrestling training? No. Wait, wait. A belt and cupping exercises. So you need, um, no, you, you need to have a team. You need to get table time. Number one. Um, could I? Make an entire arm wrestling workout with that? Yes. It wouldn't be pretty. People wouldn't like doing it. But could I make make one? Yeah. Um, but if you're not an arm wrestler and you haven't felt the pressures and you don't have the experience in the gym with how to recreate uh, arm wrestling pressures and, and all that stuff, then it'd be really hard. So an experienced arm wrestler, yes, could do a lot with little. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure uh, if the random person can make a full arm wrestling uh, program out of that. I could, though. I could probably do it with just a martial arts belt or a towel. Um, yeah, you gotta get pretty inventive with this stuff. Bridge says, I'm the one that keeps him alive. She does. She does water chave more than me. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Uh, Lena has been arm wrestling longer than Larry. Oh, are you asking for a discount code for chave, Bridget? Russell Monroe, my guy, what's up? Uh, all right, guys, we got four more minutes. 
winding down, winding this thing down. Ooh, crack my wrist. Winding this thing down. Should we do a game? Should we do a game? Guys, let's play a game. Let's do a game for some stickers. Bridget, you down? Can we send out some stickers? Can we do a game? I say Bridget because she's the one that's going to ship it out. Grab some cash in your here. I'll pay for it. <laughs> let's do a game. Okay, cool. She said, oh, no, that means yes. Um, okay, so let's do a game. Let's do a trivia game um, to send some stickers. We'll send some stickers out. Winner of the trivia game gets stickers. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, the question is, the question is, and it's going to be the first person to say the answer in the chat. And, and if anybody spams all, if it's a, it's probably going to be a numbers question. Okay, I got it. I got it. Yeah, we're going to do this one. <laughs> we're going to do this one. What is Bridget's middle name? Bridget, you can't answer it. What is Bridget's middle name? First person to say it. I don't care if you spell it correctly or not. If you just say the name, uh, I will send you stickers. Free stickers. Just put it in the chat. First person to say Bridget's middle name. Bridget, you don't, don't, because you're not going to win. I'll still let the people go until one of them gets it. No, it's not Corey. <laughs> I just tried to give out some free stickers, you guys. If you guys just, just throw a random name in the chat. I don't know, it's a guess. How would anybody know that? They won't know that. Just throw out some random names. It's a very base. I'll, I'll tell you this much. It's a basic name you hear in the United States all the time. It's nothing like European or crazy or weird, right? It's, it's, it's pretty common. It's a pretty common name. It's not Marie. <laughs> um, it it, it goes, like the names you guys are saying, it goes with it. It goes with those names. It's like that girl that ha that's named Bridget's middle name would hang out with all these girls. So it, it is it is a it is a, a first name. There I definitely know uh girls that with the same first name. Oh, Bridget giving out a, a clue starts with an H. She gave it out. And she's the one sending the stickers. So oh Steve crushed it. Steve right away crushed it. Steve. All right, Steve, you win. Guys, 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 guys. All right, Steve, message me or Bridget on Instagram with your address, and we will send you some stickers, my man. Um, yeah, so if you have Instagram or you message me on Facebook or whatever, um, it's A.W. Derek on Instagram or find me on Facebook, send me a message, or Bridget, Bridget says Bridget Sexiness on Instagram. Um, send us your, yeah, I said if they spell it wrong, it's fine. I said not gonna, we're not going to get weird about the spelling. It's just the first person to say it, right? Because that might take it way longer if they, if they have to spell it correctly. So Steve wins. Um, Steve, send us the address. <laughs> I get Bridget. It's my game. All right, we can't. We're not fighting over the chat. It's not happening. All right, guys. It is six o'clock. Thank you so much for participating and hanging out and hanging out with me this whole live stream. Um, you guys, please. Check out some of uh, the sites, the awswitch.com. Get yourself hat, shirt, stickers. Um, also, you guys check out the link tree. It takes you to all my social medias. I'll be back on Monday. You guys, if you missed this past Monday's video, the, the Pulse I did with Ryan, we had Chris Drummond on there. Very good show. A big fan of Chris, man. He's putting out great content. So you guys check that video out if you, if you haven't already. Next Monday, we'll be back, me and Ryan. It starts at 3 o'clock Western time, 3 o'clock Pacific Standard. Uh, you guys, also, if you haven't got the King of the Table pay-per-view, go order that. Don't be weird and try to steal it. So buy the pay-per-view, and uh, we're going to watch some arm wrestling this weekend. I hope you guys are doing well. I will see you guys next Wednesday. Once again, thank you for all the love, all the support. You guys are amazing. Subscribe to all the YouTube channels in the chat. Who has it right now? DF has one. I don't know who else has one right now off the top of my head. You guys subscribe. Oh, Bridget has one. You guys subscribe to Bridget's channel. She hasn't put out a blog in a little while, but she has one as well. So uh, thank you guys for all the support. Love you to death. 
and uh, I'll see you next week. Yeah.